Thank you for joining. And I'm telling you by God that your lives will never, never be the same. And I'm praying that the wind of God's miracle is going to blow in your direction as well. In the name of Jesus. Say the wind of God's miracle will blow in your direction. Every one of you under the side of my voice, you will never return the same way you came. And I pray for those that are sick. I command healing. I demand that you are healed. Causes be reversed. Yokes be destroyed. Burdens be lifted up. Bones be busted. In the name of Jesus. All right. I, we want to pray on the subject. All round fruitfulness. Get online and type all round fruitfulness. This is part two. All round fruitfulness. All round fruitfulness. You know, the last time I said something about, you know, fruitfulness, when you live, you know, a life of good works and also reflect God's character or Christ's character. And also, you know, to be fruitful means, you know, or in fact, to be fruitful is a sign of a spiritual, you know, healthy life as well. I wish above all things that thou mayest prosper and be in hell, even as I saw prospered as well. So, so prosperity is of essence as well, all round fruitfulness. And of course, you know, we, we we were reading from 1 Samuel chapter 1, the story of Hannah and Penina. This one had children, but Anna, but Anna, Anna was barren, not until God visited Anna as well. And then that stigma, that stigma in her name was removed. God is not just going to remove the stigma in your name. He's going to do exceeding abundantly whatever you could ever think of as well. Tonight for you in the name of Jesus. Closed doors will be opened. Closed wombs will be opened. Closed doors will be opened. Wombs will also be opened. In the name of Jesus, the sick will be healed. Tumors will disappear. In the name of Jesus. So today we are going to continue from where we stop. All right. We are going to read First Samuel. I'm going to read First Samuel chapter one verses. Verses six. First Samuel chapter one. Verses six. And our adversary. And our adversary also provoke our soul. For to make our fret that's angry, because the Lord had shut up our womb. That's First Samuel one, verse six. And our adversary, another version, also provoke our soul. For to make our angry as well. You see, when we have opposition, you know, we wake up as well. Because a man who sleeps in the face of attack is dead. In fact, before the arrival of the enemy. The Bible speaking in Matthew 13, verses 25. So while men slept, his enemy came and sowed tears among the wheat and went his way. And this is what happened when you are not sensitive, when you are not alert to what is happening around you as well. So opposition and enemies are assets, not liabilities. Let me say that again. I say opposition and enemies are assets, not liabilities. You understand? The first time one six Bible says an uh, adversary that's Penina provoked her the more just to make her angry. And this is what happened even you know in, in real life. Somebody you know they know what you are facing, what you're going through. But every now and then you see most of them can say things whether directly or indirectly. That's why I've been telling all of you on this platform. If there's anything God has blessed you with, don't make a mockery of someone else. Don't, of course, you know, it's sin. Do you understand? You can't tell what will, what will happen, what, what, in fact, what will befall you in years to come. So don't avoid all those things. Be praying for people when it is not working well with them, when things are not going well with them, be praying for them. 
So opposition and enemies are assets, not liabilities. You don't assets. Whatever put money, you understand, in your pocket, that is asset. But whatever take money out of your pocket, you know, those are liabilities. It's just like a company when they are owing other parties, that's liability. But, you know, whatever item gives you uh, future economic benefit, those are assets. It's just like being, you know, in a relationship and, not, and you know, this relationship, nothing is happening. Do you understand? Nothing, nothing is happening. Everything is on you. Everything, you know, it becomes, you know, the person or the man or the woman becomes a liability as well. But when you are doing something or business and then it's paying as well, it makes sense. It's putting something, you know, on the table. That is what we call assets. So pay attention. Opposition and enemies are assets, not liabilities. In the journey of life, see, destiny Every destiny needs a Judas Iscariot as well. You see, if Anna didn't have Penina, if Penina was not there, you understand, and, and she provoked her, he mocked at her, you understand, at, at some point would look, you know, this, this, thankfully at her as well. We don't know what, what would have happened, whether Anna would have had that, you know, temerity or that bold rashness to be praying and being consistent in our work with God. So when you have enemies, when you have oppositions, they are assets. <laughs> they are not liabilities as well. And of course, you know, in reality, in 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 reality, there are there are enemies that prayers won't touch. <laughs> Seriously, there are people that they will not die. On. They will help you get to the apotheosis, you know, to the apex of life, to the prime of your life as well. There are some enemies that prayers. I say prayers won't touch. People like, you know, Cyrus in the Bible, God, you know, God used, this was a Gentile also, but God had to use him and and save the Jews as well. God was was, was saying, my anointed, this is a Gentile, Gentile ruler as well. So in the journey of life, every destiny needs a Judas Iscariot as well. It is your enemy that will reveal eminence or it is your enemy that reveals eminence without judas is kind of you know probably christ would not have been you know be betrayed god probably would have had you know another you know another means of getting his son to the cross but it was judas is that started the whole thing you understand and so it is your enemy that reveals eminence and in fact let me say something you see, uh, destiny without enemy is emptiness. Can I say that again? I said destiny without enemies is emptiness. An eminence like fame without enemy is a fraud. <laughs> there are places you, you can't get to without a push. I'm telling you, without a push. There are places you won't attain without a push. So, Open enemies are assets that are not liabilities. You're going to pray. Lord, every opposition to my fruitfulness. Most of us, most of us, you, you won't be praying like you are doing now. If you didn't have any attack, if you were not attacked, if something didn't happen. Most of us would have been, you know, resting now, of course. But at some point in life, things will have to happen. For you to seek God. And this is true. So every opposition to my fruitfulness, spiritual, physical, or emotional, I will ride on them to my breakthrough. <laughs> that means, you know, they will become, you know, a stepping stone to your breakthrough. Every opposition to my fruitfulness. It was Penina that provoked Anna. Every opposition to my fruitfulness. Every opposition, enemies to my fruitfulness, spiritual or physical or emotional, marital and otherwise, I will write on them to my breakthrough. They will become stepping stones, stepping stones to my breakthrough. Lift your voice and begin to pray. If there's a man to pray, there's a God, there's a God to answer. Every opposition to my fruitfulness, be it physical, spiritual, emotional, and otherwise, I will write on them 
they'll become stepping stones to my breakthrough. Penina became a stepping stone to Anna. Whatever I'm facing, the adversity, I will write on them to my breakthrough. Lift your voice and begin to pray. 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 Lift your voice. Most of you, you can on your mic and pray. Lift your voice and begin to 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 pray. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. All right, you know, uh, I think it was uh, Mike Modoc that once said and said, your magnitude of your opposition indicates the magnitude of your promotion. So what increase your speed? You understand? In fact, enemies increase your speed. So there's no need you ranting. Start just running your race. World records are broken when the opposition is great. Your enemies increase your speed. Anna was provoked. You understand? Now we are going to pray every provocation I have suffered because of my situation. You understand? Lord, use it to propel me to glory. It happens everywhere. You understand? It happens everywhere. It happens everywhere. Uh, I think one of the illustration, a notable illustration is as like you, 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 you're a lady, you're not married, you understand? And then maybe you, you have people that are married. And every now and then they will ask you, why don't you marry? You say that you don't want to marry. Do you understand? I, 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 as if all of them are, are, are praying for you. Some are just mocking you. You know, do you understand what I mean? You're asking somebody, you don't want to marry because you got married. You are a joker. You understand what I'm saying? Even, you know, like being a pastor, an evangelist. I don't, I don't ask, say, you, you don't want to marry. Why are you not married? Why would I ask you such? It is God that gives people marriage. You understand what I'm saying? So every provocation you've suffered because of your situation, every insult I've suffered because of my situation, Lord, use it to propel me to glory. Every provocation, every you know insult, mockery, I have suffered because of my situation. Lord, use it to propel me to glory. Do you understand what I'm saying? Lift your voice and begin to you can on your mic feel you and uh, and begin to pray. Every provocation, every insult, mockery have suffered because of my situation, like Anna. Lord, use it to propel me to glory. Wow. Just <laughs> 
Every mockery. Every mockery I've suffered, every provocation. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. All right. Now, 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 if you raise your hand, the place you can open your mic. And also, while you are praying, also pay attention as well. If you can hear me, raise your hand. I will tell that for an amen as well. You know, Hannah was provoked. And then that alone propelled her to, to glory as well. I'm praying for every one of you under the sound of my voice. That every provocation, mockery, you understand, insults that you've suffered because of your situation, because of your condition, may the Lord use it to propel you to glory in the name of Jesus. They will become stepping stones to the place of your glory in the name of Jesus. I believe you, you are shouting amen wherever you are. All right, you know, Daniel and Joseph would never have become prime ministers without their enemies. <laughs> of course, we know the story of Daniel. Two of them, Daniel and Joseph, there's no how they would have, you know, become ministers without their enemies. Micah 7 verses 8, Rejoice not against me, O mine enemy. When I fall, I shall arise. When I sit in darkness, the Lord shall be a light unto me. Of course, you know that Joseph found his helpers in the prison said so joseph found his helpers in the prison remember the, the the baker and the buckler two guys that had a dream and in, interpreted their dreams one was killed and the other one was restored back to his position and then you know he forgot him but that same man that same man the buckler god had to use him and then he remembered joseph and then joseph was brought out of the prison and he came and interpreted uh, Pharaoh's dream and then he was promoted as well. So jo Joseph found his helpers in the prison. Can I say something deep now? You see, there are prisons that pushes men to the palace. <laughs> I wish I can say that again. I said there are prisons that pushes men to the palace. Whatever you've been facing, whatever encounter you've been having in life, God is about to use it to propel you to your place of glory. Get online and type amen if you believe what I just said. It is your portion. It is your portion. I said that prison that pushes men to the palace. <laughs> Go and ask Joseph. Wherever you are, God is about to take you to the place of your glory, to a place of fulfillment, a place of satisfaction. The Bible speaking in Psalms and said, Thou shall increase my greatness and comfort me on every side not just one side god god is about to increase your greatness and comfort you on every side and comfort you on every side he led me beside the still water he led me beside the still the still not the water that is running not the running water but beside the still water god is sensitive to what you can carry he led me beside the still the still the still it has to be still water so that you can rest you understand and no trouble so god is sensitive to what you can carry
And now you're going to make some declaration. I decree with confidence I will rise again. My business will rise again. My ministry will rise again. My health will rise again. My marriage will rise again. Do you understand? I decree with confidence. It's just a declaration. With confidence, I will rise again. When Lazarus died, Jesus came and said, Thy brother Lazarus shall rise again. I will rise again with confidence. Lord, I decree with confidence. With confidence. With confidence. With confidence. It might not happen now, but with confidence. Faith is a substance of things hope for the helicron of thing not seen the evidence of thing not seen so faith is you know evidence not seen of faith is hope not seen as well bible says we are saved by hope but hope that is seen is not hope i decree with confidence it may not be today but i decree with confidence i will rise again my business will rise again my life everything in me will come up again my health my health will sprout again lift a voice wherever you are and begin to pray with with confidence i will rise again i I will i will rise again i will rise again i will rise again rejoice not against me oh my enemies my mockers <laughs> rejoice not against me when i fall i shall i shall arise when i sit in darkness the lord shall be a light the lord shall be the, the lord the lord the lord the lord arise and shine for the light is come and the glory of the lord is risen <laughs> and the lord shall be a light a light a light a light unto me with confidence i will rise again it is a declaration it is a declaration it is a declaration it is a declaration you cannot demand what you cannot command it is a declaration my business will rise again my ministry my ministry my ministry my min ministry my ministry my ministry everything that had died in me whatever had died in me whatever died in me I will rise again. I will rise again. I will rise again. I will rise again. Lift your voice and pray. It is a declaration. Make it. Make it. It is a declaration. Make it. It is a declaration. Make it. Make it. Make it. Make it. Declare. Declare upon your life. I will rise again. 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 In the name of Jesus. If you raise your hand, I will take that for an amen. Raise your hand, I will take that for an amen. Say, so if you raise your hand, I will take that for an amen. I believe it's too early to sleep. <laughs> While men slept, the enemy came and so thirst. Don't forget what I said that. Enemies are assets, they are not liabilities. <laughs> Without enemies, you, you won't go anywhere. That's why, you know, in the journey of life, every destiny needs a Judas Iscariot. And the next point is weeping is not is not final. Weeping is not final. First Samuel chapter 1, verse 7. Weeping is not final. Weeping is not final. First Samuel 1 verse 7. And as he did so year by year, that's Elkanah, you know, going to Shiloh. The Bible says, when she went up to the house of the Lord, so she provoked her. That's Penina provoked Anna. Therefore she wept and did not eat. So every year, when, you know, they were going to the house of God, Penina her duty was to provoke Anna. <laughs> and the Bible says, therefore, she wept and did not eat. She wept and did not eat. So weeping is not final. We say weeping. Do you understand? The Bible says, they that so in, te in tears will reap in joy because at that point, your tears becomes the water that waters, you know, your prayers, that waters your seed. When you are sowing, 
you are planting, you are sowing seed in tears. At that point, your tears becomes the water. Do you understand? What waters your seed is your tears. And there's no how you will not reap in joy as well. So weeping is not fine. I see weeping and fasting are not signs of weakness. You understand? Weeping and fasting are not signs of weakness. They are indicators of change. They show uh, the fact that change is due and sometimes overdue as well. Now, great men in the scripture wept and after and after that great things followed. Do you understand what I'm saying? You are going to pray like David, Lord, I've wept enough. Dry my tears away. Lord, I have wept enough. You understand? Dry my tears away. I have wept enough. You understand? Maybe somebody made a mockery of you and, and, and then you started crying as well. And not being emotional. You are crying to God as well. Lord, I have wept enough. Dry my tears away. Like Anna. Bible says every year she will have to cry. She will have to weep because of Penina who provoked her on daily basis. Lord, I have wept enough. I have prayed enough. You know, prayer is not the next phase. When I say I've prayed enough, that at least to some point you've prayed. Maybe there's a particular thing you've been asking God for, putting pressure. You understand? Lord, I have wept enough. Dry my tears away like David. Lift your voice and pray. You can on your mic and pray for those of you who want to pray. You can on your mic and pray. Lord, dry our tears. Dry my tears away. Dry my tears. Dry my tears. Dry my tears away. Take away every shame. Dry my tears. Dry my tears. Dry my tears. Dry my tears. Dry away my tears. Dry my tears. I shall see no shame in the rock of the wicked. Dry my tears, Lord. Dry my tears. Dry my tears away, Lord. Dry my tears. Dry away 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 my tears. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Amen. All right, you can hold your mic. You know, the, the, the Bible speaking in First Samuel chapter 30, verses 4. The Bible says, you know, when David wept as Sikla, and even with that, he recovered all. Then, then David and the people that be with him lifted up their voice and wept until they had no more power to weep. You know, when they came back, uh, their wives, you know, we we taken away a lot of things and david inquired at the lord first Samuel 30 verses 8 saying shall i pursue after this troop shall i overtake them and the lord answered him and said pursue for thou shalt surely overtake them and without fail recover all <laughs> after all this weeping i will recover and recover all it is a declaration not just a prayer it is a cry <laughs> after all this weeping i will recover and recover all you know they, they whipped to the point that bible says until they had no more strength to whip again but david now went to the lord david not just crying not just weeping you have to go to the lord and he, bible says, he inquired at the lord and said shall i pursue after these troops shall i overtake them and the lord said go ahead for thou shalt surely overtake them and without fail <laughs> recover all. After all these encounters, after all this mockery, after all this sorrow, after all this adversity, affliction, I will recover and recover all. It is a declaration. It is a de just make it upon yourself. You understand? Make it, make it, make it, make it, make it. 
after all this i will recover after all the encounters i've been having in life my experiences in life lord i will recover all lift your voice and begin to pray i will recover all i will i will recover all after my encounters after my sorrow after all this weeping i will recover and recover all lift your voice and begin to pray Yeah, this is a declaration. Lift your voice and pray. After all this sometimes, after all this sickness, after all this crime, after all this I'll recover all. I'll, re I'll recover all. After all my weeping, after all this weeping, so the Lord, I'll recover all. After all the weeping, in everything, oh God, Father, after all, oh God, say and do, I decree we shall recover all. Father, I decree we shall recover all. Lord, we will recover all. In the name of Jesus, there shall be no sick, but there shall be no evil report of God. We recover, we recover wherever our destiny has been buried. Lord, Lord, we decree. We recover them, we recover them wherever they may heal, oh God, what you have destined us for, Lord, by your mercy, we recover it all in the name of Jesus Christ, Lord, over God, you may, Lord, you may be so naked, but you do, I will say, be so naked, do more. Lord, my decree we shall recover all. Lord, my peace, my joy, oh God, I recover them all. Lord, I decree total recovery, total restoration, total restoration. In the name of Jesus, I decree total restoration. We shall recover all. 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 In the name of Jesus. We shall recover all. In the name of Jesus. We shall recover all. In the name of Jesus. We shall recover all. In the name of Jesus. We shall stand by us, O Lord, my God. We stand by us, O God. We shall recover all. Whether the devil lacks it or not. For the Lord of the wickedness shall never rest upon our Lord. He shall not be said among us, where is thy Lord? Lord, we shall recover all. We shall conquer. We shall recover all. We shall recover all. We shall recover all in the name of Jesus. In my mother, in the name of Jesus. In the name of Amen. Jesus. Amen. All right. If you raise your hand, I will take that also for an amen as well. And I'm praying for every one of you under the sound of my voice. Whatever you lost, you recover and recover all. Amen. After all the experiences, after all the encounters, the mockery. You recover all in the name of Jesus. I say you recover all in the name of Jesus. Amen. You recover all in the name of Jesus. Amen. You see, you are going to pray again and say, "You see, Lord, my my tears are asking for your mercy. Let mercy speak. My tears, you understand? The Bible speaking, and you know, you know, we, we know what is a, a contrite heart, you know, or spirit. You say when when a person's inner man or will has been broken please off your mic please off your off your mic off your mic first 
you see when, when a person's inner man you understand when a person's inner man or will has been broken so they no longer run after the things they want but they surrender or submit to the things that god wants that is a contrite heart you know or a, a contrite spirit as well so every now and then a broken heart or will says i will no longer do this my way or on my terms but i will surrender to your ways i will submit to your ways so it's not just about you know crying being emotional when things happen you, you know you, you, that's not what i'm saying do you understand but you are broken and, and and you know at that point nobody can help you apart from god at that point what is happening is that the tears that you know that that runs down your cheeks now becomes an invitation for mercy <laughs> so your tears you know are asking for your mercy lord my tears are asking for your mercy so when god sees your tears now and he knows what you know is you know uh, what is in your heart lord let mercy speak my tears are asking for your mercy have you ever been mocked before that you know you you get somewhere confine yourself into a place and then you started praying and you're so broken to the point that you started you know like crying do you understand those were invi invitation for mercy lord my tears my tears my condition my situation are asking for your mercy let mercy speak lift your voice and begin to pray for a minute just pray my tears are asking for your mercy my tears are asking for your mercy my sorrow are asking for your mercy my tears are asking for mercy my sorrow Lord, tonight let mercy prevail. Let mercy prevail. Let us not be ashamed, Lord. Let not our enemies try your move over us. Lord, by your mercy, let your mercy prevail over us. Let your mercy, O oh God, Father, O oh God, the Bible says the broken and the contrite heart you will not despise her. Lord, I've weeped, I've prayed, I've looked up to you, I've fasted. Lord, I decree your mercy. Let your mercy prevail over our lives. Let your mercy prevail over our children. Let your mercy Mercy speaks for us, Lord. Yes, Lord, I decree your mercy. Lord, I decree your mercy. Lord, I decree your mercy. Let mercy, let mercy speak. Let your mercy speak for us. Let your mercy speak for my children. Let your mercy speak for God, Lord, best in the Let your mercy speak for my children. Let your mercy speak for my life, Augustine, I can't even mind. Let your mercy speak for the life of my siblings, O God. From over Samuel to Victoria, let your mercy speak, O God. Let your mercy In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Amen. And I'm praying that for those of you who, you know, you, you wept enough, I pray that your tears that the Lord will dry your tears. Amen. In the name of Jesus. And after all this weeping, after all Amen. this adversity, that you will recover and recover old. Amen. In the name of Jesus. All right, now, Amen. 1 Samuel 1, verses 11. And she vowed a vow and said, That's Anna, O Lord of hosts, if thou wilt indeed look on the affliction of thine handmaid and remember me. <laughs> And not forget thine handmaid, but will give unto thine handmaid a man child. Then I will give him unto the Lord all the days of his life, and there shall no razor come upon his head. You see, uh, when Rachel was, you know, she was barren, and then she went to Jacob and said, Give me children, or else I die. Not just give me a, a child or a son, said, Give me children. But only what Anna asked of the Lord was a man child. <laughs> you understand? And then he said, I will give him unto the Lord. Just one, one thing. And I will give him unto the Lord. That is a power and instrument of a vow. How many of you before you've you know there's something you look for seriously and you 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 believe 
then that God will bring it to pass, then you made a vow. How many of you have done that before? There's something you ask God for. And then you you understand you made a vow. <laughs> All right, I know, I know yeah, so and I know it's not gonna be everybody, you understand, because most times you, you don't know what is vow and the power and instrument of a vow. The Bible is speaking in Psalm, in Psalms 50, verses 5. Now pay attention. Psalms 50 verses 5. Say, gather my saints together unto me. That's God talking. Say, gather my saints together unto me. Those that have made a covenant with me by sacrifice. <laughs> Say, those that have made a covenant with me by sacrifice. <laughs> yeah, it, it, it's not just making a vow and say, oh, after God did it for you and then you, you understand. Or sometimes you say, well, if God, if you do this for me, I will stand before the congregation and thank you. But when God gave you that job, did you stand before the congregation or the people and, 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 and praise his name? Most of us, we don't do it. Do you understand what I'm saying? And then when all those things you said are captured you know, and encoded into the cycles of your life, and then you, you start blaming your family, you start blaming one of your uncles, you understand? The power and instrument of a vow. The power and instrument of a vow. Lord, if you do this, Lord, you, you understand? If you do this, you, you do this, you do this, I will do this. The, 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 I don't need to give a prayer, prayer point there. But always, you know, acknowledge that, that there's power as regarding, you know, when you make vow to God. Say, gather, gather, Psalm 50 verses 5, my sins together unto me. Those that have made a covenant, not everybody, those that have made a covenant with me by sacrifice. <laughs> and I'm praying that God will help us when it comes as regarding this. Do you understand? And you see, when you are faithful with God, it makes God, in fact, He can put, you know, weight on you. Most of us, God cannot even trust you as well. Because you don't, not that you don't deserve to be trusted, you don't just worth it. You have to get to a point as regarding your work with God, where God can put a weight on you. <laughs> you understand? Hmm. And some will say, Lord, I know when, when, when you're done with me, when you've done this, please off your mic. When you've done this, when you've done this, Lord, I will proclaim to the world your greatness and your power. And when God finally did it, what did you do? You didn't do anything. You understand? So anytime you make a vow, make sure you keep to it. Don't say, don't say to an angel, please off your mic. We are not praying now. I'm talking. Don't say to an angel, it was, it was a mistake. You know, I've been saying it. Do you understand? Don't say to an angel that it was, you know, it was an error. Say for God is in heaven and this is where you are. Most times you go to church and you make vow. You understand? Most of you will go to church and you partner with ministry. You know that, you know, like partnership, you know, that, that's a covenant. Yeah. When you make promises, you can walk away, but not when as regarding covenant. When you make promises, I mean, promises or promise, you can walk away, but not with a covenant. <laughs> you understand me? You know, because covenant, you know, it's just you. I can promise you something, just me and that's me making the promise. You don't have any part to play. But when it, when, when, when it comes to covenant, it's not just you. Someone else has to be involved. That's it's just like marriage. You know, that's a covenant. Two people, you understand, coming to and God there is also and other people as witnesses as well. So there's power, you understand, as we, when it comes to vow, the power and instrument of a vow. So right now, verse 17, I believe you've heard me. First Samuel 1 17. Then Eli answered and said, Go in peace. Say, and the God of Israel grant thee thy petition that thou hast asked of him. First Samuel 1 17. Go in peace. Do you understand? And the God of Israel grant thee thy petition that thou hast asked of him. Let me say something. Do not just pray. Don't just pray. Seal it with faith. God is not moved by need. N double -E -D. Or else there'll be no famine in in places like on in countries like Ethiopia, Sudan, and the rest. I say God is not moved by need, or else there'll be no famine 
in Ethiopia. God is not moved by number. That's, you know, the crowd or else there will be no tsunami, disaster, earthquake, and even in countries like China as well. God is moved by faith. Without faith, it is impossible to please him because they that come to him must know that he is. The reward of those that diligently seek him by faith. We understood that the words were framed by the word by faith, by faith, by faith, by faith. Confidence in him. So you must connect. Do you understand? So when you receive your fruitfulness, you have to believe it as well. What transfers current into a wire is not the size or the shape of the wire. It is purely because the wire is connected. So you have to get connected. Do you understand? <laughs> Do you understand what I'm saying? Now you are, you are going to pray, Lord, I connect to your power in this place, in this program. I connect to your testimonies of faithfulness. Do you understand, Lord, I connect to your power in, on this platform. I connect to your testimonies of fruitfulness in this ministry, these online prayers. I connect with confidence that it is done. I connect to the power that is on this platform, to the testimonies. Lift your voice and make that is just a declaration. Make it, it is a declaration. Go ahead and pray, Lord. I connect. I connect. Eli told her and said, Go in peace. I connect to your power in this platform. I connect to your power in this communication. I connect to your power, Lord.
in the name of Jesus. If you raise your hand, I will tell that for an amen. Is it most time when, when I give prayer points and you don't pray you know, like for so long? It's because you don't pray with the word, you are just praying your words as well. Do you understand? So when you receive your fruitfulness, you have to believe it. Say, Go in peace, and the God of Israel grant thee thy petition. I'm praying that God will grant all of you your petitions in the name of Jesus. I say, In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. First Samuel one twenty. Wherefore it came to pass, when the time was come about after Anna had conceived, that she bore a son and called his name Samuel, saying, Because I have asked him of the Lord conceive and give birth is it all we've been praying from you know the 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 part one you know uh, all round fruitfulness all we've been saying and praying will be a waste if you yourself you do not get to you know to the end wherein you become the ultimate plan of God for your life as well he said before it came to pass when the time was come, about after Anna had conceived that she bore his son and called his name Simon, saying, because I've asked him of the Lord, in whatever area of my life that I've been barren and unfruitful, I will conceive. It is a declaration. In whatever area of my life, you know the areas of your life that you've been barren and unfruitful, things are not working. It could be your marriage, it could be your work, your job. It could be, you know, your children are not doing well in school as well. In what area of my life that I've been barren and unfruitful, I will conceive and bring forth in the name of Jesus. Lift your voice and begin to pray. Every areas of your life that you know you're not doing well, things are not working, Lord. Lord, Lord, I will conceive. Make it a declaration. I will conceive. I will conceive. I will conceive. I will conceive. Every area of my life, Lord, I will conceive. I will conceive. Any, every area, whatever, in whatever area of my life that I've been bad and unfruitful, I will conceive and bring forth. You will bring forth and conceive. You will bring forth and conceive. You will bring forth. You will bring forth and conceive. You will bring forth and conceive. If there's a man to pray, there's a God to answer. In the name of Jesus, if you raise your hand, I will tell that for an amen. All right, God bless all of you. Now, let me say something. You see, you see, you have to prepare for change. You have to prepare for change as well and also work change. You have to get ready for where you are going. Prepare, plan, expect it, look up to it. Talk it, feel it, walk it, do your own side of it. Why? You see, first time in 18, the Bible says, you know, after uh, Eli spoke to her and said, Go in peace, and the Lord will do according as you've asked, you understand, the, the petition you've placed before him. 
Then she went away. Bible says, and did eat. That's Anna. And her countenance was no more sad. Verses 19. And they rose up in the morning early and worshipped before the Lord and returned and came to their house to Ramah. And Elkanah knew Hannah, his wife. And the Lord remembered her. So you see, she started, you know, dressing well. She slept with her husband, one children, and all those, you know, and do you understand what I'm saying? You see, you know, like a woman now, for example, you're looking for, you know, the fruit of the womb, of the womb, and you see this one sleeping. You are sleeping here, and your husband is sleeping here. <laughs> you see, it was until they did their part that the Lord remembered her, and there was change. I'm praying for you that everything you need to do to back up this breakthrough, this fruitfulness, may you receive receive the grace now in the name of Jesus. So everything you need to do to back up this breakthrough, this fruitfulness, this turnaround, this shift, receive that grace now in the name of Jesus. I say receive the grace now, the grace now. Receive that grace now. Receive that grace. 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 Receive that grace in the name of Jesus. And I'm praying that above all, at the end of the day, may the Lord remember every one of you. Bible says, and the Lord remembered her. The Lord remembered Hannah. The Lord remembered Hannah. She was remembered. Every one of you, if you were forgotten, do you understand? That spirit of being remembered, remembrance, is coming upon you in the name of Jesus. It's coming upon every one of you in the name of Jesus. It's coming upon every one of you in the name of Jesus. The Bible speaking in Genesis chapter 8 verses 1 and said, And God remembered Noah, <laughs> Genesis 19, 29. And it came to pass that when the Lord destroyed the cities of the plain, that God remembered Abraham and sent out lots in the midst of the overthrow. You know, when God was about to destroy Sodom and Gomorrah, the first thing that happened that was that God remembered Abraham, not Lot. God remembered Abraham, and then God now, you know, he now came for Lot, and Lot, Lot's life was pre, was preserved. Most of you, you, you don't have covenant with God. You, you are not, you know, there's no covenant between you and God. I don't mean what is reading and what do you read in the Bible. Oh, God has made a covenant with. There's no issue with that. You understand? There's no issues. You understand with what the Bible says and all that. But you see, in reality, you can just quote all the scriptures. Then, if you don't have a relationship with Him, you understand. You are a new man. A new Bible says, "Put on the new man, which is renewed after knowledge." You've received. You understand His lordship. You bow to His lordship. You can't be in covenant with Him as well, and this is true. Do you understand what I'm saying? So it's not just saying I have do you, Abraham. God made a covenant with Abraham. So when God remembered Abraham, when he was about to destroy the cities of the plain, that's Sodom and Gomorrah, Lot was preserved. So if you're a father, you're a mother, whether you're a father or a mother, then do you know that God can remember his covenant with you and then preserve your, your brother's life? <laughs> I'm telling you. Exodus 2, 24, the Bible says, said, God said he heard their groaning, that the children, children of Israel, Bible says, and he remembered his covenant with Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. So the children of Israel, when they were praying, when they took place of your mic, when the children of Israel were praying, you understand, when they were praying, when the children of Israel were praying, God heard their groaning, he heard their cries, their affliction, he saw them. But what God did was, he had to remember his covenant with Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. He could hear them. God heard them. But then, before God could hear them, then God will have to remember his covenant with Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. This is like a ministry. Let me say something. You know, most of you have pastors. This is a deep thing I'm saying. You know, if, so, if all of us, we have pastors. You have people you submit to and all that. If your pastor, you know, is you know is in covenant with God, has a covenant, or God made a covenant with your pastor as well, do you know you can be praying wherever you are? You can be praying in the place of prayer. God will hear your word to your prayer as well. But God will have to remember the covenant he made with your, your mentor or with your spiritual father as well. Do you understand what I'm saying? God will hear you. There's no problem with that. 
but God will have to remember his covenant because when if God makes covenant with me, like people who are connected to me, you understand? If God, you know, God, you know, had a covenant with me, made a covenant with me, so that covenant should include you. It that covenant should include you that is connected to me. So that you can sit in your house, you can be sick, and then you are praying. I'm not there, you don't need to call me, you are just praying. Moses doesn't need to go to get down to the valley. Moses will have to be on the mountain. His hands just needed to be raised up as well. As long as Moses' hands were raised up, the Bible says, you know, they won. But when his hand, you know, you know, he was weak as well because he had grown senile and was stricken in years as well. And so anytime his hand, you know, his hand came down, then they lost. So you don't need Moses to come down to the valley because if he's coming down to the valley, he would need to drop his hand. Do you understand? And by keeping down his hand, you know that that, that is a, Israel will have a great loss. They will be defeated as well. So it's better Moses stays here on the mountain, on the mountain top as well. Do you understand what I'm saying? So anybody you submit to, you have to be included in that person's covenant. Do you have a pastor you, you are submitting to? You have to be included in his covenant with God. When God made covenant, makes covenant with him or made covenant with him, you were included. Gather all my sins together. <laughs> Say, those who have made a covenant with me by, by sacrifice. Abraham was praying for Ishmael, his firstborn. That time it, there was no Isaac. And said, oh, that Ishmael might live in your presence, in your sight. And God said, Ishmael, don't worry, I will give you, Isaac is coming. So when he prayed for Ishmael, he was head for Isaac. When Abraham also prayed for Sodom and Gomorrah, I said, Lord, if we see 20 people, won't you save 20 righteous men? Won't you save the, the city? If, what about 50 until they, they got down to 10 as well? So when Abraham was praying for Sodom and Gomorrah, he was head for Lot. <laughs> you understand? He was praying that God should, you know, you understand? Abraham was praying that God should not, you know, destroy Sodom and Gomorrah. But God hated him for Lot. When God was about to destroy the cities of the plain, the Bible says he sent Lot out in the midst of the overthrow. <laughs> Deuteronomy 5, verse 27. I'm telling you scriptures and this are deep thing. The children of Israel, they were talking with Moses. They were, you know, they were telling him, their problems they were you know lamenting yeah. when Moses left them it's in your Bible Deuteronomy 5 27 when Moses left them God told Moses and said while they were talking to you they were lamenting complaining to you he said I heard their voices <laughs> you understand so you can be talking to Moses or discussing with, 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 with Moses and then you will be heard God hears you do you understand what I'm saying? The children of Israel, they were crying. They were lamenting, groaning. God heard them, but God went to Moses and said, I have heard their cries. I have seen their affliction. But they were the one crying. So why God didn't go to the children of Israel directly and said, yes, so my children, my people have heard you. But God had to go to Moses. And that's why in reality, sometimes you have to look for a man who has heard God on your behalf. And this is true. So you, you have to get to a man. You understand? You have to look for that man who has heard God on your behalf. Because by the time you are talking to Moses, God will be hearing all your lamentation as well. <laughs> That's a deep thing I just said. That I'm praying that this all run fruitfulness will be your portion. And may we all be remembered, not just for anything, but for good. In the name of Jesus. I speak life into all your brains, your businesses. Whatever your hands will touch after now, it will be established. Nothing will die in your hands. Nothing dies in your hands. You will not give birth to children. Or you will not give birth to affliction. You understand? You will not bring your, your, your children to affliction. Nothing dies in your hand. Your business will not die in your hands. Your marriages will not die in your hands. Nobody dies in your hand. Nothing dies in your hands. May the Lord establish the works of your hand. All round fruitfulness is what I'm praying for every one of you. I wish above all things that thou mayest prosper and be in health, even as I so prospered as well. In the name of Jesus. Amen. God bless you. I believe you are blessed.
God bless you.